All right, the untimely death of Gerald Cotton, the founder of bankrupt Canadian exchange Puerto Rico CX, and the conspiracy theories around it have been revived with Netflix's new documentary, Trust No One, The Hunt for the Crypto King. Joining us now to discuss is someone who appeared in the documentary, Andrew Wagner, co-founder of Block Raiders Guild. Hi, Andrew, thanks for joining us. So you knew Gerald as a member of the Vancouver Bitcoin co-op in those early days. Uh, tell us about Gerald, what was he like? He was friendly. Uh, he wasn't very uh, dominant or extroverted. So uh, he didn't speak as much as his business partner did. Um, he definitely didn't seem someone uh, who was sinister or likely to cause problems. He seemed rather benign. So when you say his business partner, uh, you, you're saying Michael Patron, right? That was Correct. The, uh, yeah. And how, how was, well, I, you know, the dynamic as you described is sort of that uh, Gerald Cotton was sort of the, the beta to uh, Patron's alpha. Um, well, nonetheless, I mean, it, it seems as if uh, Cotton was, was himself let's say on the sketchy side of things, did he ever give any indication at all that, well, his past might be a little bit checkered or at least uh, he had something hiding? Not really. He seemed uh, like a rather benign kind of person and he didn't really speak as much as Mike did. So we had less opportunities to hear him say things that would paint him in <clears throat> one way or another, just because he was quieter. So one question at the center of this documentary, and I'd be curious to hear your view, is do you believe that he's still alive? I doubt it. Um, you know, I think the journalists did a good job of uncovering things. And I think more likely than not, Gerald is dead. Um, you know, and, and that's not saying how he's dead or why or what killed him or the nature of it, because uh, there's all kinds of ways that people have speculated that he could have died. But I don't think he's still alive out there somewhere, no. What about his wife, Jennifer Robertson? Did you get a sense that she was in on the uh, crimes that were committed while Gerald Cotton was running Quadriga CX? Uh, the thing is that none of us really knew her. Um, I never met her, and other people I knew who knew Quadriga never met her. And um, so she was always rather mysterious. Uh, it was hard to really say anything about her at all, except random speculation, because I'd never experienced her personality or what she was like. Uh, as a person. So if anything, that made speculation go wilder, right? Because uh, few of us could vouch for who or what she was like. And so that left people to fill in the dots and the blanks with their own speculations. So uh, Michael Patron, getting back to him, uh, of course, you, you you got to see him in his, uh, in, at the height of his glory days, I guess. Um, his name came up in the news recently with whole Wonderland uh, fiasco. Uh, what was your reaction when you first heard his name bandied about um, in recent days, uh, a few weeks ago, rather, um, when he was involved? Like, what, 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 were, what were the first thoughts you had when you found out he was involved in another project? Um, kind of interesting, I guess, because it demonstrated that he had not lost interest in cryptocurrency or pursuing projects in this industry. Um, but it, you know, it didn't seem, I didn't hear that he had committed in that instance anyway, a fraud, just that uh, his existence as an influential person in their project was into intolerable once discovered because of his checkered past. Um, so I don't think he ever actually got the chance to like steal from any users or anything like that, or, or if there's any indication that he would have, but he definitely was using some pseudonym 
and uh, it looks terrible for them, right? Because did, did, this. Sorry, go on. Well, no, I was I was, I was going to say so. You, so you think in this whole uh, the whole Quadriga affair, at least he sort of left involvement before um, things went sour or, or before the, 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 the Ponzi essentially was up, correct? I think so. That's the impression I get. And well, I know for a fact that Gerald had assumed control of the company to a degree he had not previously had. So like in the beginning, Gerald didn't have full control of Quadriga and uh, he was a co-founder, if anything. Uh, there was a point in time when, when that shifted, when he assumed more power and Mike's power in the organization was reduced. And uh, after that point is when people think the bookkeeping got shadier. And you can, there's reasons you could think why. So Mike wanted to go public with their company. And uh, I assume that would have brought scrutiny on whatever Gerald was doing behind the scenes that he didn't want anyone to know about. Um, I don't know what kinds of due diligence or record ch checks they would have done on him had he pursued trying to go public. But I know they disagreed heavily on that. And it was... Uh, yeah, they used to be friends, and then they weren't. You know, it was kind of that kind of dramatic. Um, right. Andrew, I wonder what you personally learned about the crypto industry having observed this uh, scandal, if you will. Uh, me personally, I've learned uh, to be cautious of generosity and people who seem too good to be true. You know, from our perspective at the Bitcoin co-op, we were just volunteer Bitcoin evangelists. So we didn't have any salaries or get paid or anything, but um, we did need sponsors to help us get booths to give away free Bitcoin. And we set up student clubs at universities and stuff. So we were just on the lookout for crypto companies who were willing to sponsor our outreach efforts. And Quadriga filled in that gap to a large degree. And in retrospect, there's you it kind of looks like they were purchasing goodwill to a degree, you know, by helping our nonprofit volunteer organization, they made themselves look uh, much more benevolent. Um, and I guess I should have been more like, what's the word? If something's too good to be true, it probably is. You know what I mean? Um, but it would have been nice if other companies had been more aggressive and trying to sponsor events as well. You know, from our perspective as a nonprofit, we we just got sponsors and we used it to help spread the good word, mm -hmm. you know, and we took what we could get. It would have been nice to have more support from like BitPay and other companies so that we didn't have to rely on Quadriga's generosity. But for a while, that was kind of our only just, option. Just to follow um, up, do you think that there is a reliable Canadian exchange now? These days, um, we just use whatever ever is used internationally now. There's no big like Canadian exchange that people like would tout as such. Um, it's we we're just rolled into the international market now. People I know use all kinds of different exchanges, you know, like Coinbase and Bitstamp and whatever. And there are a couple brokerages in Canada but none have reached the level of uh, predominance that Quadriga had achieved in its time. Uh, Andrew, finally, I'm just curious, what is your feel, what is your take on the documentary? Sometimes when someone isn't part of the documentary, you know, you don't see the whole thing until the end. Just curious how you think it came out and sort of what message it sends, because I think for a lot of people, this is going to be their introduction to the crypto industry. Like this is how they're learning about crypto. So I'm just curious what your thoughts are on the final product. Um, it's an interesting story. People like to watch it. I don't know if it makes crypto look good or bad. I've talked to other journalists and done interviews or they've made insinuations like that. And, you know, I just tell them that cryptocurrency is a tool. It doesn't have feelings or ethics. It's as good as the person who uses it or as bad as the person who uses it. And, you know, in this instance, we saw what happens when a bad person uses it. And there are plenty of counterexamples of crypto being used in good ways. And, you know, it really just matters who's doing it and why. 
Um, and be careful who you trust with power in our industry. Uh, Andrew, uh, do, you, do you think that maybe perhaps, uh, well, what's your take on regulations in the industry in terms of regulating, for instance, exchanges? Do you, do you think that that's not the answer or do you think that, that things like the OSC, like the Ontario Securities Commission, like the SEC in the United States, do you think that they have a role in crypto exchanges or should they still just be left out after this whole experience? Well, in Canada, the Securities Commissions got very involved with the Quadriga uh, issue. In fact, they were active in the investigation and trying to come up with some government-mandated solution. So they're already here. That's that's happening. I think definitely the Quadriga incident increased the demand and impetus on these regulators to get involved. Like, it made them feel more required to do so. Um, I'm not sure if that's good or bad. It depends on how they do it. You know, the regulators in Canada have been relatively decent for the most part. Um, it hasn't been too onerous in Canada compared to some countries. So as long as that continues to be the case, I'm not complaining too heavily. You know, like the Canadian authorities are actually knowledgeable of terms like utility token and stuff like that. You, you can actually meet interesting designations and it's possible to work in this industry. But definitely, I think they're getting more maybe strict with exchanges, in particular with validation that uh, they're not a fractional reserve, validation that they hold the reserves they claim to. And I'm not sure I have a problem with that in particular, mm -hmm. because I think most people in crypto don't want their exchanges to be fractional reserves. They would definitely prefer for exchanges to be holding 100% of deposited money. And if that's the only extra burden they're going to add, then I'm okay with that. But I don't want it to get too much further down the rabbit hole where I have to report every like one hundred dollars at an ATM. That that's ridiculous. You know what I mean? Right. Um, All right. There has Andrew, to be a limit. 